All right, yeah, we've seen this before. I'm gonna skip over it this time. If they had a new animation, then I would uh, then I would sit through it. Okay, Ridge Racer Type Four. This is a de demo. Awesome. You know, Ridge Racer always represented the type of racing game that I was actually interested in because I was never. I mean, I do appreciate the Gran Turismo series for its more sim-like um, and all that, but I kind of prefer my racing Ridge games to be a little more arcadey, less realistic. That being said, it's been a long time since I played any of the Ridge Racer games. So, we'll see what this is like. It's a loading screen, I guess. Oh, no. It's got to be an outside the car view. There we go. <laughs> Triangle button. Oh, I'm losing right off the bat. You know, this game looks... I mean, I'm playing it in a resolution higher, of course, than the original game, although I did, I don't think I've got, like, more advanced texture filtering. That just ran right into the wall. I'm not sure I've got better texture filtering enabled or anything, but I am playing this game at a resolution higher than the original would have been, the machine would have been capable of doing. But I have to say, this game looks surprisingly good for a PlayStation 1 game. I think maybe that's one of the things that you saw in a few of the racing games, especially like late-gen PlayStation 1 games, that they look better than you would think that they would be, given the machine was on. PlayStation 1 was one of the early 3D-capable consoles, or games that, or consoles, I should say, that were designed with the idea of playing 3D games, and that be because of that, they haven't aged especially well. I'd say like anything prior to the Dreamcast is really going to look ugly in a lot of ways retroactively, looking at them from a modern perspective. But racing games on the PlayStation 1, once they really figured out how to pull it off, started to look really good. I mean, I guess maybe it has to do with the fact that they could load the thing down with better textures because, you know, you can stream data off the disc, sort of like the way Crash Bandicoot does or Soul Reaver does for the early next sections of the track. Oh, and you could use that to have better looking textures than what you would see otherwise. Soundtrack is pretty bad though. <laughs> Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, I almost had him. I'm on the second lap. I'm definitely not winning this race, but I'm not coming in last place either. I was never good at racing games, which may be the reason why I haven't spent a lot of time playing them. I got you now, you son of a bitch. Aha! Ah, oh, you, you suck. <laughs> Who's next? In the third lap. I don't even see the next one. There's a graphical uh, glitch that's occurring when I'm looking at something that's far off in the distance. Now I'm running this on PCSX2, I guess version 2.0.5. And I'm using their, uh, their HLE BIOS uh, emulation. So it's possible that that's the result of some graphical glitch because I'm not using an actual BIOS. See that black lines across? I'm seeing the seeing the blocks, I guess, between either texture segments or those blocks are possibly the lines between um, geometry blocks, polygons. 
dude hit me in the back and gave me a speed boost. Not seeing damage on these cars is a little bit off-putting. That especially became weird in, like, um, later-gen racing games where you'd have these really high-detail models for cars, and then you'd smack into a wall and, like, nothing would happen. Okay, I got fourth place. It would just be really weird looking. Alright, I'm not going to watch my replay. And we're at the loading screen to take us back. So let's get out of here, move on to the next demo. Roll Cage, another racing game. This had something to do with... We're, we're beyond the point where every demo disc I got was something that I played over and over again. I mean, I no doubt played every demo at least twice, but it wasn't like the early days when, like, I would get a demo, demo disc, and I'd just play it exclusively for like a month. The same demos over and over again. And probably never actually get the games. Money was expensive, and I didn't have a lot of it. So, the, what was it, like $7 or something like that for issues of this magazine would be my barrier to entry to be able to play games. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. The controls are so bad. But I can drive up walls. <laughs> anyway, I, I... In the early days, every demo disc I got would be one that I played time and time again. So there were certain games like um, the Duke Nukem game that was, I think it was in the last episode, or Metal Gear Solid, or whatever, that I would play over and over and over again. I have no control here. Or even the demos of games I didn't care for, like the Unholy War, or whatever. I'd play that time and time again. But... We're at this point here, a lot of these games, just like, you know, it, unless it's something that really drew my interest, I'd play it a couple of times and move on. I remembered this game, which is more than I can say for some others, but nothing truly special about it. I think maybe I found it difficult to control like I am right now. Oh, shit. Ah! <laughs> Knock that building down. <laughs> Destruction physics. What the? F I was winning too. <laughs> oh, I still am. Okay, this game's a, a tad easy. First time playing, I shouldn't win even on easy mode. The controls are very loose like a slight tap on the d-pad or the analog stick and you just go off in crazy directions I guess they make it they make up for it a little bit by having your car sort of roll off the wall instead of just crashing or plow through that building that I demolished instead of crashing and the game looks alright I guess but it's definitely not something I was gonna plop down forty or fifty dollars for however much this game was I don't know a lot of PS1 games range from $20 to $50, I think. I think $50 is probably the top end. No, no, I want to I wanna exit. 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 <laughs> Select button usually exits. But it won't let me do it. It's not working. Start and select at the same time. Come on. Holding them down. Holding them down. No, what? Alright, I'm going to have to reset. Alright, I had to reset the game. I couldn't get out of the roll cage demo. And then the, uh, then the emulator crashed. And the, uh, <laughs> license plate on the back one of those cars is jerky. Rugrats. 
Oh, this is going to be bad, isn't it? Mini golf. Rugrats, uh, it was a show on Nickelodeon about babies. And I was a kid when Rugrats came on. So I watched it. I don't remember really thinking. Oh. They recreated the, uh... They recreated the opening to the show. I'm gonna sit and watch this. Ah, well, that was something. It was maybe... I, I don't know. I, I don't... I bet you if I went back and watched an episode of Rugrats, I'd hate it. <laughs> Which is why I'm not going to do it. And I'm just going to maintain some feeling of nostalgia for this show. I'm not going to read the instructions. It's a mini-golf game. No, Tommy. This way. <laughs> I'm, I was never any good at mini golf in real life or in game. How do I? That's what you get for putting a baby into a friggin' game of mini golf. Trick shot. Ah, uh, what? It's a par four? <laughs> this is terrible. Oh, what was his name? Chucky. Chucky, his name was Chucky. And I guess just all the way up. Oh, you suck, Chucky. It's a par five. Other way, Chucky. What the hell's that sound? <laughs> oh, you suck. Alright, I gotta get out of this stupid hole. <laughs> All the power, Chucky. All the power. No, I made it in. Ice Cream Mountain. That was an episode, wasn't it? They were trying... Oh, Angelica. The bitch. <laughs> they were trying to get to... Uh, they were in a mini-golf course, and they were trying to get to a... Uh, what they thought was a mountain of ice cream, but it was just a mini-golf hole. Although, I wouldn't think a Rugrats game would be one about mini-golf. I guess it fits in with an episode. Alright. What's the other thing? Grandpa's Teeth. What was that? Was that a different kind of game? Yeah, I get it. I'm going to go back into that, because I think Grandpa's Teeth was something else. And it just booted me out of the demo. So I want to go back in and see what the other one was. THQ made this. Now, nah, I don't need that. Okay.
Ride on Spike, chase the goose and save Chucky. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh my god, this is bad. I guess it's a collection of mini games. Like, I can't imagine the entire game is like this. Or like the mini golf. Damn it, Spike! <laughs> it stopped and waited for me to catch up! What? <laughs> oh, that's giving me the impression that I'm not actually going to catch up to it until I reach the end of the course. Which also means there's no failure state. Yeah, it's waiting for me. Jump over the stupid log. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> kind of wish I didn't go in there and check that out. Oh, this is going to be bad. Alright, so, the state of wrestling games in the 90s. WCW was this thunder? What's this thunder then the screen? But yep, thunder. Pretty sure there were I can only play as Hogan or Goldberg. I'm not quite sure where this falls in the timeline here. But you had the WWF games and you had the WCW games. And in the early days of like the PlayStation 1 era, you had... Oh, which, who was it that was developing the WWF games? They, they're the same height despite being different heights. <laughs> oh, God. Are those supposed to be shadows? Vertical suplex, suplex. Get him! Get that bastard! You know, I know this game could definitely look better than it does. Kick him. He kicked out. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> I can't figure out how to play this game. Uh, you know what, maybe it's because I'm using the control stick and I shouldn't. So you had the WWF games and you had the WCW games. And the WWF games, I think, were being developed by Acclaim. And they were, I mean, they were alright, I guess, for their day. But they were bad in terms of, like, actual games. <laughs> then you had the WCW games, which were being developed by THQ. Well, THQ was the publisher. I think Ukes might have been the developer. It's like a very, very small crowd. I'm going to lose just because I can't figure out how to play the damn game. And I really don't want to. <laughs> and the THQ games for the WCW were so much better. Because you had like WWF Warzone compared to like WrestleMania. Or, or compared to rather um, WCW versus NWO on the N64 which was so much of a better game because it was based off some Japanese wrestling game that was just better although it lacked all of like the career mode stuff that people liked but then for some reason I guess maybe because WWF became more popular in the late 90s than WCW they sort of switched and all of a sudden the Acclaim games were being released for the uh, WCW t 
tie-ins and they became trash. And the Ukes games, or THQ, started coming out for the WWF. Just, just don't kick out. <laughs> he celebrated before the count. So then you got started getting crap like this compared to WrestleMania 2000. Oh, this is copyright 98, so I don't know. <laughs> and uh, Or WWF No Mercy. Or WWF Smackdown on the PlayStation. Which were so much better than what we used to see. I think... Well, THQ went out of business and got bought out. But Ukes, I think, were developing the WWE games until uh, like last year or something like that. When... Ukes finally realized that they weren't going anywhere and suddenly everything got changed over and some other developer picked it up and they released a truly awful game. I haven't played it, but I've seen videos of it. It's like, what the hell happened? Warzone 2100. I do not remember this. Oh, that WCW game was ass. Just in case you're looking for my opinion. Eidos, a subsidiary, uh, well, nowadays, anyway, it's a subsidiary of Crystal Dynamics. Or maybe it was just bought out by them, who was then in turn bought out by Square Enix. Eidos was... Is Eidos, like, British? I don't know. Uh, let's not go through a tutorial here. I don't think I have the patience for that. Is this a an, an RTS? Wow, that's oh didn't complete the loading bar. Um, let's get over this. Skipping over this cinematic. Scavenger raiders are approaching our base. Defend the base, then search for the scavenger camp. Okay. Oh, it is an RTS. An RT, a 3D RTS in the PlayStation One. Up, oh, I'm being followed. <laughs> what do I do with this dump truck? Research, build. Construction unit, Viper wheels. Holy shit, okay, I remember this. This, oh, oh, this was a game I always wanted to get, but I couldn't, uh, but you know, money was expensive, so I didn't, so I didn't. It was... Okay, so the, the gimmick behind this, I mean, aside from being a 3D RTS on the PlayStation 1, was that you could design and build your own units. So, looking at this thing that I'm driving around here, it's some kind of a tank, sure. And you... You can operate it and run around and do all that kind of stuff. I think there was a PC release for this also. I should look into that. But the game would... You could... I, I went into the research search model mode. So hopefully I can show you. Okay, so. And nope, not yet. Controlling this is a bit of a pain. I don't know how to. I don't know how to do anything. Uh... Okay, so it's researching now. You have the choice between, say, like, the turret, the body, and the tracks. So...
Unit orders. Where was unit orders? Turn, return, return. Guard position, pursue, do or die, retreat. Hold position. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this thing. Once I get and get that researched, I can demonstrate. But I can build, like, there's a turret, there's a body, and there's wheels. That you can construct your own thing. Now, get over here and destroy whatever this is. <laughs> and you could build your own thing. I guess maybe that was the reason why they went with the 3D engine. Because you could slap together different parts of a 3D, 3D model in order to build new units easily enough. So I researched a new weapon, a new gun. Design. New vehicle. So I have a choice. Oh, no, I still don't have a choice of a new... But Okay, let's just design a fake a thing I already have. Machine gun, Viper, wheels. Now, I already have this, but I'm going to research it anyway. Machine gun viper wheels. Machine gun viper wheels. Construction unit viper wheels. It's because I only have the same thing. Tungsten tip machine gun. Okay, I can't research better machine guns. I just can... And just sort of uh, research. I just research the same damn thing. Oh, okay. Research facility, factory, demolish oil derrick. I guess maybe I'll need that. <laughs> Is this an oil thing? Yes. I. Ah, oh, damn. I'm gonna need to defend that now. I get it's it's definitely a unique game. I don't know how many RTS games even use this kind of mechanic even now, a couple decades later. Oh, they can definitely see they're slamming up against the limitations of the PlayStation One with uh, this game here. The draw distance is pretty pathetic. It's hard to get an idea of what you're driving into if the world is being drawn in. I'm going to leave these two here. Because some, some, they're getting through those defenses down there. This isn't it. Still researching. Come on now. Get somewhere and shoot stuff. How did I get into that other window? I'm lost. Okay, maybe this is the reason why I never ended up getting it. I was picking the RTS games at the time. Uh, Warcraft was the big thing that I liked. And I guess... Th this seems a little more um, gimmicky in a way. Because it seems like just uh, maybe the... I'm not being attacked all that often. I'm not... I'm not being... I'm not being attacked that often. Oh, there we go. The build. 
Do I need a, another research facility? Is that what I need to do to research better stuff? Anyway, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one of these units and I'm gonna just ram it. Damn it! Come on. All right, I'm just gonna run it up here and see what this is up here. Body part. Oh, does that mean I can research something new? I'll check it out in a minute. Nope, unit lost. <laughs> Flamer! Okay, so perhaps I didn't need that extra research unit, but maybe I have a new body. No, I don't. Damn it. Okay, I'm going to wait for that Flamer to finish. I'm definitely not going to play this to completion, though. This is going to take too long. Found the enemy base, though. Oh, look, I got a tag along. Catch up. Oh, am I destroying it? <laughs> yeah, wreck the walls after you've destroyed everything else. I don't know what it's doing. I'm not controlling it, telling it to do any of that movement. So, did I win? <laughs> anyway. Let's, uh... Is that research done yet? Yep. Okay, so now I have a choice. Flamer. I only have the Viper body, and I only have the wheels. So, Doom. Now, let's build that. No, not that. Manufacture. Oh, I can maneuver them around on the field like this. If I had a mouse, if I had a mouse, this would be a lot easier. I guess it's an oil platform. Alright, hold here. Where's my new... There we go. My new flame unit. Let's see if we can pathfind all the way out here. Oh, it's on its way. <laughs> oh, it just drove past him. Oh, this is not how you get down there, though. Oh, maybe it is. Okay, yeah, yeah the, I never ended up getting this game, so I did play the demo a couple of times, and I thought it was something, but, you know, didn't get the game, so. Don't have the strongest nostalgic feelings for this, so, aside from burning people alive, 
I'm about done with this, so let's skip out. Legend of Lagaya, this is just a video. In RPG, I had a demo for this, but I never bought the game. I had a friend who did, though, and he said it was good and I should give it a try, just... You know, money was expensive. It was some kind of a... It was a fantasy RPG about a bunch of people who are living in a world where at night this sort of mist comes out, and with mist comes monsters, but they manage to find monsters that attach to their wrists and make them more powerful so they can fight the monsters. And then they were supposed to travel around the world and, like, resuscitate these trees that could push the mist away. I don't know. I didn't go through it, so I, I don't know what happens. I'll watch the video, though. It was another one of those games that I wanted to get. Never did. You know what actually you know what the problem was? And now I'm now I'm remembering. By the time I decided like okay, you know what, I'm finally getting that game. It was out of print. And I went store to store looking for it and I couldn't find it. Like the Funko Land didn't have it and the Sears nearby didn't have it. The Walmart didn't have it. Nobody had it anymore, so I wasn't able to find it. Maybe I should try finding it now. Well, the game probably sucks, though. I mean, even if it was good for its time, there's a chance that in the 22 years since it released, 23 years, I guess, now, since it released, it's just, its gameplay style was just so out of date that I wouldn't be able to stand it anymore. <laughs> anyway, maybe I'll, I'll give it a look. And if it ends up being any good, then I'll Maybe think about doing a video series on it. But anyway, we're back to Ridge Racer Type 4, so... What was Ridge Racer 3? Was there a Ridge Racer 3? The Ridge Racer Revolution, I think, was the first game. Then the second game was just called Ridge Racer. Then I then maybe there was a Ridge Racer 3, then Ridge Racer Type 4. The name naming convention was weird. Anyway, that's that's the Official U.S. PlayStation Magazine Demo Disc number 19. Numbers are not coming through consistently because I didn't actually have a subscription to the magazine at the time. I would just buy them at newsstand prices, which is an expensive way to do it. But there was some weird problem I had where I kept trying to subscribe to it. But for a few years, I was unable to. Like once the, the subscription thing that I sent in got lost in the mail... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, it's the end of this.